Okay, let's name this according to the IUPAC rules. The first thing I'm going to do is find the longest continuous chain of carbons here. So I could see that this is the longest continuous chain, right? And I could count one, maybe one, two, three, four. Notice I'm not counting this. It's not part of the longest continuous chain. If I want to incorporate this right here, I could make this the longest continuous chain. One, two, three, four. So if I want to make this my first carbon, I can go that way. Or I can count one, two, three, four that way. Either way, there's going to be one CH3 that's not part of my longest continuous chain. And what pops out is we have an attaching group. All right, now this is called a methyl group. Now why it's called a methyl group is because it's a one carbon group. And to name things that have certain number of carbons, you need to memorize the um, prefixes for the parent names of how many carbons. It's important to know how many carbons you have in your parent name. It changes the chemical and physical properties. So we can go to a table if you have one. And the table that we use in this course is table P, and it gives me all the prefixes for the parent name, the ending name, and meth is one, eth is two, prop is three, but is four, and so on. So we're going to use meth for the one carbon attaching group, and we, and we put a Y and an L, all right, a methyl, I believe that's, a, that's correct, and that is the name of our attaching group. So we've identified a methyl group attaching. Now, it's important, though, that we name our parent chain first. Now, we can clearly see that we have four carbons. Now, four carbons, whether I name one, two, three, four, or I name this the one, two, three, four, and this is my attaching group, I definitely have the longest continued chain of four carbons. So that four carbon chain is going to give myself a butte. And how do I know? Well, back to our table. We name the attaching group a methyl, but the butte is for the four carbon continuous chain, the longest continuous chain. So that's where we get the butte from, right here. All right, the next step is to know if I've got single or double bonds because this ending could be an ane, it could be an ene, or it can be an ine, depending if there's single, double, or triple bonds. So to figure that out, I'm going to draw that. So I want to use the um, straight, just to make things easier to understand, I'm going to use this as my longest continuous chain. It would not matter if I kept it the other way. And I'm numbering my carbons. And let's just draw this. So I've got a CH3. That means I have a terminal carbon, which is going to have three H's. And then I have another carbon, that's CH. It's bonded to this attaching group, which is now over here. Okay, and I'll put the CH3 here. I've got a CH2. And then I have a CH3 again. Now, every carbon must make four bonds. So this one has three already, so there's one. This had two from bonding to the hydrogen and the methyl group. So I've got to make sure every carbon's got four bonds because carbon has four valence electrons and requires a full octet to work. So clearly, by drawing these out and seeing how many H's, this is a saturated hydrocarbon. This is a butane molecule. And again, if I don't know that, we can check somewhere else. And here are single bonded hydrocarbons or alkanes. If it was double or tripled, we'd have an ene or an ine ending, and they give you the example. So we have a butane because we have four carbons. This is giving you eth for two. So my ending name is a butane. This tells me that the longest continuous chain has four carbons and is single bonded. Now, the last part is that we've got a methyl group attached. Where it is exactly attached on my longest continuous chain, which we are naming this from this, is very important. As you can see, I've got the CH3 on the second carbon, all right, as I have named them. So I need to tell people when I'm talking about this compound where this group is attaching. Remember, the IUPAC naming system is based on the structure. And if you don't get the structure right, you will have different physical and chemical properties. Structure is king. So we've got to make sure we get the structure right. The methyl group belongs on the three or the one. You've got to say so. 
uh, except in this case, putting the methyl group here would see also be on the second carbon. I'll talk about that in a second. But we have a methyl group on the second carbon, so we need a number. Two methyl butane. And you can bring those words together. Sometimes they're separated or sometimes they're brought together. But that's the name. The attaching group is right there. And I'm telling you where it is. So on the second carbon of a butane, I've got a methyl group. The name tells me the structure because structure is king. I've got to know it. If I don't get the structure right, I don't have the right chemical and physical properties. Now, one point I will make here. If you were to, just by accident, name this as the first carbon, this was the second, this was the third and fourth carbon, you could see how you could name this 3-methylbutane. And that would be incorrect according to the IUPAC naming system. Attaching groups must have the lowest number possible. So you have to number your carbons so that your attaching groups get the lowest number. Very important.